Affordable cars are hard to come by in 2024, but it gets even more rare to find a fun sports sedan with a manual. And yet that's exactly what you have with the 2024 Volkswagen GLI. Within the Volkswagen family, you still have a number of fun cars to choose from, whether it is the GTI, Golf R, or the GLI. Unfortunately for this sports sedan, it's the bridesmaid, but never the bride. It's the runner up and it always will be to the GTI because it's sportier, has the hot hatch design, and more practical. It's very difficult to pass up on that value proposition. But within the sports sedan segment, the GLI goes head to head with the Honda Civic Si, the Elantra N line, maybe the Elantra N if you really want to compare it by price, and then also the Subaru WRX. And while the GLI might not be the sportiest in this segment, it gives you a lot of features that other rivals are not going to provide, especially under 35 grand. And that's why I am here. I want to experience the 2024 GLI Autobahn trim, take a look at the exterior, the interior, take it out for a test drive, and see why, if you are looking at buying your first ever fun daily driver and you want a sedan, you also want that manual, then maybe taking a look at the GLI might be a great decision. Now before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout and thank you to Quirk Volkswagen in Manchester, New Hampshire for letting me come up here to check out the GLI. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Volkswagen inventory. So let's begin with pricing. The model we have today is the Autobahn, coming in at just under 32 grand. This alone is gonna be a major selling point because it undercuts most of its rivals and also rivals that have similar features. When you take a look at what the Autobahn trim is giving you, under 35 grand, it's mind boggling and it's amazing that Volkswagen was able to do this because even within the Volkswagen lineup, to get the same features on a Volkswagen GTI, you're spending 36 to 38 grand. So the GLI is already an interesting and compelling choice. But also on top of that, if you are looking at buying a 40th anniversary edition, that comes in below 30 grand. That is unheard of in today's market. Also, it's a very rare car, only 1,984 were made to commemorate the year the GLI was introduced to the lineup, which was 1984. On top of that, with the GLI, you have a very striking road presence, especially for our model today with the pure gray paint color. It has a nice Nardo gray look to it. And even though I think Nardo gray has been overplayed the last few years, this still draws a lot of attention because of the contrasting accents. Up front, you're gonna have a mixture of gloss black, the signature red accents, and the honeycomb mesh grille. This alone differentiates the GLI from a regular Jetta. With the GLI, you have the GLI badge on that honeycomb mesh grille. A nice touch, but we have seen this before in prior generations. With the red accents, they run the length of the front fascia into the full LED headlights. Now the turn signals are incandescent, which isn't uncommon in this market. Then for the lower portion of the front bumper, it is more aggressive. And this is really where you see the body lines be a bit sharper compared to a regular Jetta. So you have the honeycomb mesh grill for the lower vents. And also that continues on to the plastic portion of the bumper as it then transitions to the gloss black and red accents. This car definitely draws attention, especially with its front fascia and overall design. Moving over to the side profile, it's all about the smaller details, but it's also here where we begin to notice the features that come equipped on this model that you won't find elsewhere. So you have the GLI badge on the front fender. Again, we see that on the Volkswagen GTI, and it is a reminder that this isn't a regular Jetta. Then of course, with the Jetta model and the GLI, you have a nice striking body line that runs the length of the silhouette, again, giving you that sportier feel and quality. With the Autobahn trim, you will have 18 inch alloy wheels wrapped in all season tires. Now, if you are comparing this to a WRX, the WRX comes with summer tires. And if you're somebody who doesn't care about that and you just wanna run all seasons, the Autobahn is equipped from factory where you can use this car year round, especially if you're not taking this to the track at all. That's actually really great to see. Also, some people might point out that with the 18 inch wheels, that might take away from comfort. However, with the GLI, and this comes standard for the Autobahn, you do get the DCC system. So you have adaptive dampers, and that is one of the reasons why the GLI will be seen as a softer car compared to the GTI, because of those adaptive dampers that come standard. And that will give you a bit more of a manageable daily driver, where if you wanna have some fun on some winding back roads, put it into sport, 
But if you want to just drive a car that is comfortable and a bit more luxurious, dare we say, on a longer commute, just put everything in comfort and you'll be good to go. And while we're discussing the tires and wheels, I might as well bring up the fact that with the GLI, you also get the Golf R brakes, providing a lot of confidence when you do approach twists and bends on a winding back road. Also, for an, a stock brake kit, this is usable if you do go to the track as well with your daily driver and of course this sports sedan. Wrapping up the side profile, you will have body color matching side mirrors with turn signal indicators. Not a lot of cars in this market, especially under 35 grand, gives you that. Also, they are memory position. Again, a very rare feature. And you have blind spot detection for added safety. Then as you make your way around to the back, the cosmetic elements that will draw your attention the most will be the LED taillights, the GLI badge and the contrasting accents. We also have a bumper guard on our model, which I'm really glad to see is in gloss black because Volkswagen typically goes with a chrome look and this really ties into the overall design of this car. For the lower portion of the rear bumper, you have dual exhaust outlets, of course, with this model being the GLI, whereas with the regular Jetta, the exhaust outlets are not visible, so a nice small touch. And then adding some further symmetry to the overall look of the sports sedan for the rear diffuser and with this cladding, you're still going to have that honeycomb mesh grill. Again, gives you a nice sporty touch to this car that you're not going to find on other trims. Under the hood will be a 2-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine, producing 228 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. This powertrain can be paired with either a 6-speed manual or a 7-speed DSG. Our model does have the 6-speed, but you can't go wrong either way. The GLI is one of very few cars where you could go with the automatic and not miss out on anything unless you are a purist and you want to roll through the gears yourself. The seven speed DSG, in my opinion, is one of the best automatics money can buy under 40 and possibly 50 grand because once you get to the 50 grand mark, you're looking at the dual clutch from Audi, but also ZF8 speed. But for an affordable car like this, the DSG is a great pairing with this engine. When it comes to straight line speeds, zero to 60 times come in at around six seconds, which would be par for the course for a vehicle in this segment and is a bit faster than the Honda Civic Si. Then when it pertains to fuel economy, you're looking at right around 24 miles per gallon in the city and 35 miles per gallon on the highway with this model. DSG just gets a bit better at 26 and 36. Honestly, for a sports car like this, a fun car that you can drive on a daily basis, that is pretty economical. Stepping inside the GLI, you are greeted by a very long list of features that for an Autobahn trim and for a car under 35 grand, a lot of manufacturers are not going to match. I think only the Elantra N and N line will be similar in regards to the packages they offer at this price point. If you want similar features from say Subaru, maybe even Honda, you'll be spending close to 40 grand if not more. Let's begin with the seats. These are leather trim sport seats for both the driver and passenger that provide a lot of support and bolstering. Also, of course, with them being leather, a bit more cushioned and higher quality than the cloth seats that we see in some rivals at this price point. The driver's side is power adjustable, whereas the passenger side is only manually adjustable, which isn't too much of a surprise. However, the driver's side does have three position memory for added convenience. And if you have more than one driver in the family, that is perfect to have. And that also matches the memory side mirrors as well. But on top of all of that, these seats are heated and ventilated, which I think, again, is only matched by the Elantra N. So Volkswagen has a nice value proposition in regards to the creature comforts. But what about technology? Well, with the GLI, right off the bat, you have a full digital gauge cluster where you can customize what you see from the screen, but also scroll through a variety of information. By using the haptic feedback buttons on the steering wheel, you can scroll through driving data such as your digital speedometer, your fuel range, your trip computer, fuel economy, also uh, your driving assist features such as the lane assist, adaptive cruise control, and also your blind spot monitoring, which I would leave on, especially for added safety and peace of mind. You can also change the radio station from the steering wheel as well by using the buttons. Again, nice minor feature to have so that you're not reaching over to the infotainment system. And speaking of the steering wheel with the haptic feedback buttons, it's also heated as well. And that again is not something we typically see in this market under 35 grand. By using the view button, you can go with more of a traditional look with digital gauges. Even though we don't have the analog gauges like a lot of purists would prefer, you can still go with that old school look, but in digital form. 
On the left side of the steering wheel will be the controls for your adaptive cruise control. Also, of course, you can lower and raise the volume when you are listening to your favorite music. And speaking of music, with the Audubon trim, you do get the Beats audio system to amplify the audio of your playlists that you like listening to on your longer drives. Quickly taking a look at the infotainment system, you will have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android compatibility to go along with a wireless phone charging pad if the features that we've already gone over just isn't enough for you. But this head unit is Volkswagen's older MIB user interface that I actually really like and I think is aging very gracefully. On both sides of the screen, you will have touch sensitive icons for the radio, media, phone, voice, apps, sound, car, and menu. You'll also have physical dials for the volume and tuning. When you click on the menu screen, you'll be greeted by a very clean layout with quick access icons that will get you to different menus, such as the vehicle menu, your navigation, your radio, media, and also vehicle assistance systems. But better yet, this screen is very responsive and there's no lagging at all. And resolution is pretty high quality. This is a budget version of Audi's MMI user interface and you see that with the layout. If you have experienced some newer Audis lately, this is not gonna be too much of a difference, especially when you are comparing this to say an Audi Q3 interior. One feature that will be most relevant to you, especially since you are most likely an enthusiast and someone who's looking for a sporty experience, you will have different drive modes to select from on this screen, such as Eco, Comfort, Normal, Sport, and Custom. And since we do have the DCC system, you can adjust this drive mode to your liking. So you can fully customize everything, such as the dynamic chassis controls. You can change that from comfort, normal to sport. You can also do that with steering, the drivetrain, the engine sound, the adaptive cruise control, the climate settings, and you can also reset this at any time. This gives you a lot of customizability, but also gives you something that you will not find in most vehicles in this market. When it pertains to cross-shopping this with the Subaru WRX to get this ability to customize the driving experience and to have the adaptive dampers, you're spending close to $45,000. So this undercuts the WRX by a whopping 10 grand. Although a number of you are gonna say, well, the GLI is front wheel drive only, so that makes sense. But just in regards to features, this is definitely a step ahead of a lot of competitors in this segment. While from the screen, you can adjust the climb control settings, that is a bit redundant because beneath the head unit, you will find physical dials and buttons for the dual zone climb control. That is right, dual zone comes standard on the Audubon trim. Your three-level heated and ventilated seats, also, of course, the front and rear defrosters. And then lastly for the screen, obviously, with it being a brand new vehicle in the 2020, since it is mandated, you will get a rear backup camera to help you park the GLI. Then continuing on with the rest of the interior, above the wireless phone charging pad will be two USB-C inputs. Then next to the gear shifter for the center console will be your start-stop button, your electronic parking brake, your drive mode selector, traction control on and off button, and a 12-volt outlet. Of course, up front you will have two cup holders. And then for the standard storage compartment, a very deep area here where you can probably store a couple small water bottles, and that is pretty cool to see for a car in this market, especially on the MQB platform, but also for vehicles in general. A lot of center consoles and center storage compartments are pretty small where you can only fit uh, maybe a smartphone or a wallet. Also in this compartment, you will have a USB-C input. Then to round out the front seating area, if everything else just didn't entice you, you will have a power panoramic moonroof, which will let in a lot of natural light to the interior. Taking a look at the second row seating area, we're gonna start off on the passenger side. This has been adjusted most of the way back. It's also somewhere on a recline. And I have a few inches of legroom to work with here. When you take a look at legroom dimensions for the second row, that comes in at 37 and a half inches. That would be on par with the Honda Civic Si and an inch better than the Subaru WRX. So in regards to interior space, it's not lacking at all. Of course, with this being a sedan with the lower roof line, if you do have taller passengers in the back, they might be hitting their head on the headliner. But again, this isn't gonna be a family vehicle. And most likely, if you do have people in the second row, it's to show off what the GLI is capable of. Now, in regards to shoulder room, not that bad at all. Of course, this is a compact sedan. So we have to keep our expectations to a minimum in regards to overall interior space. But still, if you only have two people in the back, it should work very well. People will not be feeling cramped or claustrophobic. 
Now moving on to the center seat, you are gonna have some great placements for your feet. The center up is very aggressive though, and that will take away from legroom and shoulder room. And because the GLI is smaller and thinner, I don't think you'll be able to fit a third person comfortably in the center, maybe on a short drive, but on a road trip, it's just not going to work. And that's not what the GLI or GTI is designed to be. So just keep all of that in mind. And then on the driver's side, this seat is adjusted as someone of my height around 5'5". And I have plenty of legroom here where I can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the driving experience. Also, of course, with the seats being leather upholstery, very comfortable, very cushioned, and definitely gives you the comfort and quality that you want to see in any price range, even under 35 grand. A bit surprising for the second row, we do not get center mounted air vents, nor do we get a 12 volt outlet, a USB-C or USB input. Some cars do offer that in this market. However, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Making our way around to the back of the GLI once again to check out the rear cargo area. Of course, you're not going to have a power trunk. That is just not going to be seen in a vehicle at around 35 grand. You'll be spending around $50,000 to get that on an Audi A5 Sportback. But inside behind the second row seats, you're looking at right around 14 cubic feet of room, which would be on par with the Honda Civic Si and Subaru WRX. We have heard for years that sedans are not practical and you have to go with the hatchback at the very least to get that versatility and utility. But with the GLI, there's a lot of space to work with here. This cargo area is deceptively deep and wide. And I think that if you are going on a road trip with the family, a significant other, or some friends, you can easily fit probably six or seven bags of luggage back here. I was able to store all my camera gear today, no problem. So that's two bags of camera gear, a gimbal box, and a tripod and I can still go grocery shopping afterwards. So it's still usable space that if you don't have a family and you don't store a lot of items back here, this is perfectly fine, especially if you don't wanna go with a GTI and you don't wanna go with a crossover. Then with the second row seats folded, you'll have more space for longer items, such as maybe a table, a couple boxes, or maybe skiing and snowboarding equipment during the winter. But better yet, beneath the floor mat, you are going to find a spare tire, and that is not seen in the Subaru WRX. If you are cross shopping the two at this price point, that could be the deciding factor, because if you do encounter a flat on your road trips or travels, you can fix that and be back on the road. And now that we've gone over everything, let's take the GLI out for a quick test drive to see how it performs. So having driven the GLI around for about 10 minutes or so, what I've noticed immediately here with this car is that it's tuned primarily for comfort, even though you have the sports tuned suspension, stiffer handling, and also a nice weighted steering as well. But it doesn't feel like a Volkswagen GTI. It definitely doesn't feel like my Mark 7 GTI and outside the steering wheel, it doesn't really feel like the Mark 8 either. Volkswagen acknowledges the fact that people who are purchasing a GLI are from a different demographic. They might be a bit older, more mature. They're not looking for the stiffest of suspensions and getting abused on some winding back roads or when you are commuting to work every single day. With the adaptive dampers, it is a very comfortable ride. This is actually quite enjoyable as a daily driver and has this baby Audi A4 feel to it, but with a manual, and you're not gonna get a manual from Audi. This is kind of the end of the line here from Volkswagen or from the Volkswagen family that gives you this type of setup with a sports tuned suspension, with very nice aggressive braking, and of course that six speed manual. In the corners, it does pretty well. I do feel some of that body roll though. But still, very fun. But it's here where the GLI is the bridesmaid and not the bride. Because with the GTI, when you are in the corners, you feel the stiffness and firmness of the suspension. Whereas this feels a bit more lighter on its feet. It feels a bit more softer. And because of that, it's not gonna be as track focused or track tuned from the factory. You will have to do some modifications to get the best out of this car. But if you're somebody who is a purist, who wants to roll to the gears yourself, you want a relatively quick car, but you also want a car that keeps you engaged behind the wheel with modern technology and a whole list of amenities, the GLI is in essence in a league of its own. Compared to other manuals in this market, you do have pretty long throws with this six-speed manual. 
maybe there might be some aftermarket support there where you can get a short throw shifter because that would give you a bit more engagement and really provide crisper gear shifts as well with this car. But also, one thing I really like is that it's easy to downshift and rev match with this sedan. And everything is very smooth. It's very German in that way. On top of that, with the clutch, pretty light clutch, you can find the bite point relatively easily. And it's a very forgiving car. I do think though that when it pertains to the on-road performance, this is where the GLI will suffer against some of its closest rivals, such as the Elantra N or the Subaru WRX. Obviously, it doesn't have all-wheel drive, so that alone puts the WRX in a better category if you're looking at a vehicle for all-weather purposes. But I also think that if you're somebody who is looking for the most amount of speed in this segment, you got to go with the 7-speed DSG. But the manual is more fun. It's much more engaging and it definitely gives you more of that analog feel despite the fact you have the full digital gauge cluster and nice infotainment system. As a fun sports sedan, it does have a nice pickup to it. I love the linear power band as well. And better yet, you also have the nice braking capabilities with the Golf R brakes. But even in sport mode, with the audio being pumped in to the cabin, it's a very quiet driving experience. You don't hear a lot of the outside world at all. It's a nice isolated feel. And there is a nice sense of refinement, especially with the leather trim seats. They keep you in place. They hug you. I also love the fact that even in sport mode, you go over the bumps and imperfections pretty well. You're not really feeling those jolts. You're not getting thrown around. It's a very compliant and competent daily driver with a six-speed manual. But I have to say though, What's really surprising me here, what's really adding to the experience, especially just hopping into this car fresh, is that the downshifts, the fact you can rev match so easily, and there's no learning curve hopping into this car, is something that I can really appreciate. Being the only German car in this segment, it gives you that German engineering, it gives you that German handling as opposed to the Subaru WRX with a very light and vague steering feel that a lot of VB WRX owners have been complaining about over the last few years. But out of the box, this has a nice stiff handling and weighted steering that most certainly draws my attention, but gives me a lot more confidence when I am on back roads or in corners such as this. All in all, after this quick test drive, this is a really nice package. I think 228 horsepower and 258 pound weight of torque is more than enough for a vehicle in this segment. You have that punch off the line, and honestly, it doesn't feel underpowered for what it is. Compared to the Honda Civic Si, it's a quicker car. You also get a bit more features for the price as well, especially with the Civic Si still having markups. I also think compared to the Elantra N-Line, which no longer offers a manual, this gives you a more compelling choice. And of course, with the six speed, a more compelling reason as to why to choose the GLI over the N-Line. And then as you go higher up, when you start comparing this to a WRX or an Elantra N, performance-wise, this is where it's gonna lack a bit. It's not going to be the most dynamic in its segments in that regard. But as we've already talked about earlier on in this review, it's all about those interior features, it's about the interior quality, and it's the value for the price. And I don't think there is a perfect car in this segment at all. Having owned a Volkswagen GTI, having owned a Subaru WRX, the current generation, there really isn't a perfect car. There's not a perfect solution for a vehicle under 40 grand. But Volkswagen is giving you a very enticing package that you're not gonna find elsewhere. 
you get the technology that matches what we have with the Elantra N. You get the heated and ventilated seats that Subaru isn't going to offer at this po price point. You also have the dynamic chassis control and the adaptive dampers, which makes this a much more suitable daily driver with a manual for someone who has a family. Because I'd say I'd take this over the GTI. The GTI, even stock, is pretty stiff. And you feel those bumps and you feel those jolts. And even though straight line speed and horsepower figures aren't going to outclass the Elantra N or Subaru WRX, this to me is more of a jack of all trades that may not do one thing particularly well, but does everything just good enough to make it a good choice in this segment. So to wrap up my time with the Volkswagen GLI, what I've learned here with this car is that it's very well-rounded. That's mostly the value that it's providing rather than the straight line speed and overall performance. If you're looking for a car that's performance focused, I'd say go with the GTI. The GTI would be the better choice. But if you're looking for a fun daily driver that's also comfortable and suitable for a family, but also a car that gives you a lot of features and high quality features at that, not only with the heated and ventilated front seats, leather trim seats, the full digital gauge cluster, you're getting quite a bit. The adaptive dampers alone is a compelling choice because that gives you a lot of customizability to the driving experience. A lot of cars under 40 grand aren't going to give you that. Now, I think in regards to performance, it does fall behind the WRX and also the Elantra N. It might even be a stretch to put the GLI in that category. But when you're comparing this to a Honda Civic Si, maybe even an Elantra N line, that's what the GLI could be a great alternative. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys next time.